वेलकम गाइस टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल मेक इन एन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड द थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ क्लास सिक्स हिस्ट्री एन बुक द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज इन द अर्लीएस्ट सिटीज द चैप्टर स्टार्ट्स विद द स्टोरी सेविंग एन ओल्ड बिल्डिंग जसपाल एंड हरप्रीत वर प्लेइंग क्रिकेट इन द लेन आउटसाइड देयर होम when they decided uh, when they noticed that people who were admiring the dilapidated old building that the children called the haunted house look at the architecture said one of them have you seen the fine wood carving asked one of the women we must write to the minister so that she makes arrangements to repair and preserve this beautiful house why they wondered would anybody be interested in the old uh, run down house so in this story we see that two children they are confused when they see other people looking in amazement at an old dilapidated house and they think that why would someone appreciate such a old and run down place so in this chapter we will uh, try to find out the answer to this question so let us start the chapter we see that the story of harappa very often old buildings have a story to tell nearly 150 years ago when railway lines were being laid down for the first time in punjab engineers stumbled upon the site of harappa in present day pakistan so we see that the site of harappa was discovered by chance when engineers were laying down railway lines to them it seemed like a mound that was a rich source of ready made and high quality bricks so they carried off thousands of bricks from the walls of the old buildings to the city to build railway lines many buildings were completely destroyed so we see that when the engineers they discovered this uh, site of harappa to them it seemed like a big mound of well baked bricks and uh, high quality bricks and so they used these bricks uh, for railway construction and many buildings as a result of this were completely damaged then about 80 years ago archaeologists found the site and realized that this was one of the oldest cities in the subcontinent so we see that after that about 80 years ago uh, archaeologists finally found out about the site and they realized that the place that they have found was the one of the oldest cities that were existed in the subcontinent that is the indian subcontinent as a, this was the first city to be discovered all other cities from uh, where similar buildings and other things were found were described as harappan so we see that uh, due to the first city uh, that was discovered was called harappa so at later on when similar cities in the same region or uh, and the things that were found in the cities were all known as harappan that is the uh, related to harappa these cities were developed about 4700 years ago so we see that these cities were almost 5000 years ago. Uh, then what was special about these cities many of these cities were divided into two or more parts usually the part to the west was smaller uh, but higher archaeologists describe this as the citadel so we see that the uh, parts the part that was located to the west side of the city, higher elevation and it was known as the citadel 
the path to the east was uh, larger but lower this was called the lower town very often uh, walls of big bricks were built around each part so we see that the part of the city to the east was known as the lower town and uh, there are also that are made of baked bricks that are built on each of these parts that is the bricks uh, were so well baked that they have lasted for thousands of years the bricks were laid in an interlocking pattern and that made the walls very strong that due to the high quality of the bricks they have managed to last for so many years so many thousands of years made the walls very strong um in some cities special buildings were constructed on the citadel for example in mahenjo daro a very special tank which archaeologists call the great bath was built in this area so we see that in the citadel area there were uh, several special buildings uh, one such building has been found in the city called mahenjo daro it is known as the great bath now as the name suggest it is a very big uh, bath and it was made using bricks coated with plaster and it was made waterproof with a layer of natural tar so we see that uh, the construction techniques of the advanced there were uh, steps leading down to it from two sides while there were rooms on all sides so we see that they had also made steps leading down to the bottom of the great bath from two sides of the great bath and there were also several rooms on all the sides surrounding the great bath these might have been a changing room or store rooms uh, water was probably brought in from a well and drained out after use perhaps important people took a dip in this tank on special occasions so we see that uh, the water that was used in uh, the great bath was drawn from a well and uh, after use it was drained out uh, also uh, historians suggest that since this structure was located in the citadel region um, it was probably used by the important people of the city for special occasions to take bath and so on so other cities such as kalibangan and uh, lothal have had fire altars where sacrifices may have been performed and some cities like mohenjodaro lothal harappa had elaborate storehouses so we see that other structures such as uh, uh, fire altars in kalibangan and lothal we have been found uh, here these are evidences of uh, sacrificial fire altars and also uh, evidence of store storehouse has been found in uh, mahenjo daro harappa and lothal you can see that all the different harappan sites of, uh, have been marked in this chap uh, in this map all these are primarily located along the river indus and uh, some are near the coast uh, so let us continue we also have a picture of the great bath from mohenjo daro in this pictures that are the steps leading to the bottom the rooms on all side and so on uh, so let's proceed to the next section that is houses drains and street were either one or two stories high with rooms built around a courtyard most houses had a separate bathing area and some had wells to supply water so uh, the houses in the harappan cities were 
uh, one two story high and uh, they were built around a central courtyard the rooms were in the courtyard and we also find that uh, these houses had a separate bathing area and some had uh, a running uh, supply of running water many of these cities had covered drains notice how carefully these were laid out in a straight lines although you cannot see it each drain had a gentle slope so that water would flow through it so in the harappan cities there are also uh, we have found the uh, presence of covered drains so these drains were laid out in straight uh, lines and also these drains had a gentle slope so that you know waste water or garbage would not uh, accumulate in it and it will it would flow down through the slope uh, very often the drains in the houses were connected to those on the streets and smaller drains led to bigger ones so we see that the drains from the houses were uh, connected to those in the small streets and then uh, the drains in the small streets led to the ones in the bigger street or the main roadways so this sort of created a grid pattern in the cities drains were covered inspection holes were provided at intervals to clean them so we see that uh, these drains were also covered with inspection holes provided at a uh, distance to uh, keep them clean and uh, uh, maintain these drains thus all three the houses drains and streets were probably planned and built at the same time so we see that the town planning they built all the houses drains and uh, streets in a very planned manner and probably they were built uh, in the same time uh here is the picture we can see how bricks were arranged to build walls in the harappan city so in this picture we can see the arrangement of bricks in a wall of the harappan city you can see the bricks are in a interlocking pattern so as we read that this add, adds to the strength of the structure so here are some questions that list at least two differences between the houses described here and those that you studied in chapter 2 so uh, chapter 2 uh, it was perhaps uh, the second chapter we saw that there were uh, mud houses people lived in uh, caves and so on and now we see that the development of housing has significantly improved we see that uh, one or two uh, two story houses are there there also uh, have separate bathing area water supply they are built around the central courtyard so we see that uh, there is stark difference between the houses of the indus valley civilization time period and those of the previous uh, time periods so let us proceed uh, the next portion is life in the harappan city uh, harappan city was a very busy place there were people who planned the construction of special buildings in the city these were probably the rulers so we see that uh, these cities of uh, harappan civilization were quite busy they were full of people and uh, the rulers of these cities they planned all the special construction uh, throughout the city it is likely that the rulers sent people to distant lands to get metals precious stones and other things that they wanted they may have kept most of the valuable projects such as ornaments of gold and silver or beautiful beads for themselves so we see that the rulers of the harappan cities also sent their people or emissaries to distant lands to uh, gather metals or different types of precious stones and jewels now the rulers might have kept uh, the most precious of all these things for themselves now uh, there were also the scribes these people who knew how to write they helped to prepare the seals and uh, perhaps wrote on other materials that 
uh, have not survived so another group of people that we see are the scribes so these are the people who knew how to uh, read and write and they wrote on the famous harappan seals and also on other perishable materials uh, besides there were men and women crafts persons making all kinds of things either in their own homes or in special workshops so we see that uh, there were another group of people in the harappan cities these are known as the crafts person the crafts person uh, were both men and women they made uh, all kinds of different kinds of things and uh, either they used to make these in their own homes or at special workshops people were uh, traveling to distant lands or returning with raw materials and uh, perhaps stories many terracotta toys have been found and children must have played with them so we also see that uh, people of the harappan cities used to travel to distant land for raw materials and uh, they returned with special uh, precious gems uh, rare raw materials stones metals and also they brought back with them several stories of their adventure to those lands we also find uh, evidence of uh, terracotta toys now these terracotta toys were probably used by the children in the harappan cities uh, to play uh, in the in this page if we see uh, these are the picture of a street in mahenjo daro with a drain so this the picture above is a picture of a street in mahenjo daro with drains that we can see and um, uh, here is a picture of a well uh, in the in the cities and the far left there is a picture of the harappan seal so this is the picture of the harappan seal and uh, the signs on the top of the seal are part of the script so all these signs that you see these are part of the harappan or indus valley script this is the earliest form of writing known in the subcontinent scholars have tried to read these signs but we still do not know the exactly what they mean so this is the famous indus script uh, this is perhaps the oldest form of writing in the subcontinent and still we have not figured out what these uh, symbols mean and scholars are still trying to uh, get the meaning of these symbols so we can decipher these seals i also here is the picture of the terracotta toys that were used played uh, played by the children so if we look at the next part new crafts in the city let us look at some objects that were made and found in the harappan cities most of the things that have been found by archaeologists are made of stone shell and bronze so we see that uh, in the harappan cities mostly things made of stone of uh, shells you know shells are uh, sort of fossils of small animals cowrie shells uh, and uh, metals these have been found among metals uh, copper bronze gold and silver have been found now copper and bronze were used for making tools weapons ornaments and vessels and gold and silver was used in the making of ornaments and vessels perhaps the most striking finds are those of beads weights and blades so we see that uh, not only did the harappans use metals and stones and shells archaeologists have also found uh, precious beads polished uh, different kinds of polished beads uh, different kinds of uh, very carefully made accurate uh, weights and uh, uh, some blades made of metals so if we see the in the picture that is given below uh, here are the beads that are given many of these were made out of carnelian a uh, beautiful red stone so the, this picture you can see these are the beads made of red stone the stone was cut and shaped polished and finally a hole was 
bored through the center so that a string could pass through it so you see that uh, by by using this technique they have uh, joined the, these carnelian stones together and made a sort of necla necklace on the far right we have uh, these are stone blades that have been made uh, bottom right here is a picture of an em uh, the embroidered cloth a stone statue of an important man found from mohenjo daro shows him wearing an embroidered garment so this is another example of the uh, fine craftsmanship of the people of the harappan civilization see the facial features of this uh, sculpture and the features of his garments have been finely made and decorated so uh, let's continue the harappans also made seals out of stone these are generally rectangular and usually have an animal carved on them so if we go back we can see that uh, in this seal we have a picture of an animal on it the harappans also made pots with beautiful designs such as the one shown on page 6 so if you uh, read your ncrt you go back to page 6 and uh, you can see the picture of a harappan pot over there so here is another question that is was metal used in the villages you learned about in chapter 2 so in chapter 2 we saw that um, in the villages mostly the tools were made of stone there were different kind of stone and bones were also used um, uh, different uh, it was made of different kind of wood was also used so the use of metal was very less uh, during the stone age metal was not used as the name suggests stone was the primary instrument was stone used to make weights uh, yes stone was indeed used to make weights uh, there is an example uh, if you see this picture on the top then, uh, uh, these are precisely of a stone and these weights were probably used in so let's continue cotton was probably grown at mehergar from about 7000 years ago actual pieces of cloth were found attached to the lid of a silver vase and some copper objects at mohenjo daro so we also see that the people of Indus Valley civilization they knew about uh, uh, growing co uh, cotton and it was pr probably first grown at Mehargar which was even before before the time of the Indus Valley civilization that is about 7000 years ago uh, archaeologists have found actual pieces of cloth uh, attached to a lid of a silver vase and they have also found several copper coins at Mahenjo Daro. Uh, archaeologists have also found spindle walls uh, made of terracotta and faience. These were used uh, to spin threads. So, uh, archaeologists uh, have uh, found the presence of spindle, you know, made of terracotta and faience these were used in the making of a uh, thread that was used in weaving uh, so with the discovery of uh, with the starting of uh, co uh, cotton in these cities we also see that there is gradual development in the weaving techniques now if you look look at this box this blue box it talks about fines f a i e n c e so what is faience unlike some stone or shell that are found naturally faience is a material that is artificially produced uh, gum was used to shape sand or powdered quartz into an object this object was then glazed and resulting in a shiny glassy surface so we see that um, this was a man-made object that was used uh, using a gum that was used to 
shape a uh, sand or powdered quartz into the shape of an object these objects were then glazed and uh, this resulted in a very shiny and glassy looking surface and these uh, the the colors of the object finally was usually between blue and a sea green these were used to make uh, beads bangles earrings and tiny vessels so this was more mostly used in decorative or uh, decorative things let's continue many of the things that were produced were probably the work of specialist a specialist is a person who is trained uh, to do only one kind of work for example cutting stones or polishing be beads or carving seals so we see that uh, most of the work that we saw the archaeological evidences these are mostly work of specialist so these are people who specialize in doing only one type of work they have been doing this kind of job for many years and they have uh, gained a mastery over their trade so if we uh, look at the illustration at page 26 and uh, see how well the face is carved and how carefully the beard is shown this must have been the work of an expert craftsperson so in uh, page 26 we have the picture of this statue so we can see here that all the facial features and uh, the description of his uh, clothes have been finely carved. So this uh, indicates that this is the work of a specialist who uh, has mastery over the uh, carving of stone statues. Uh, so in the next section we see that in search of raw materials. Now raw materials are substances that are either found naturally or um, these include wood, ores of metals or they are produced by farmers or herders. These are then processed to make uh, produce the finished goods. So we see that uh, the raw materials that we gather from the nature such as wood or metal uh, are, or uh, these are generally produced by the farmers or the her herders uh, these get processed into a final product like the grain that is produced by the farmers or the animal hide produced by the herder gets uh, processed into a food uh, or the uh, animal hide get processed into a uh, piece of cloth so these are the finished products for example, cotton produced by farmers is a raw materials like we talked about and this is uh, this could be used by uh, in uh, specialist to make a cloth. While some raw materials that the Harappans used were available locally, many items such as copper, tin, gold, silver, precious stones had to be brought from distant places. So we see that uh, the Harappans uh, sourced their raw materials locally as well as from distant places such as uh, the different places are given below. We see the Harappans probably got copper from the present day Rajasthan and uh, even or even Oman in West Asia. So we see copper had two sources that is from Rajasthan and uh, Oman in West Asia tin which was uh, mixed with copper to produce bronze uh, may have been brought from present day Afghanistan and Iran. So bronze was a very important metal during this time period as the Indus Valley period falls in the bronze age. Bronze was the primary metal. So to produce bronze you had to mix copper and tin together. Uh, together. So this tin was brought from Afghanistan and Iran. Also gold could have been brought from Karnataka and uh, precious stones from present day Gujarat, Iran and Afghanistan. So if you see at the picture how were goods carried from one place to another. Look at the illustration. Uh, one shows a toy and the other is a seal. Can you suggest what are the mode of transport used by the Harappans? Did you come across illustrations of wheeled vehicles in earlier lessons? 
so we see that in the these two pictures here is a picture of a uh, cart that is a, there uh, it has wheels fixed wheels this is a form of a mode of transport and in the seal if we see there is probably a picture of a boat so th these are the methods through which the harappans used to transport their goods and um, this this is perhaps the first instance that we see that such a wheeled transport or water transport being used um, as before uh, this time there we don't have any evidence of these kind of uh, vehicles being used so let us go to the next uh, section food for people in the cities while many people lived in the cities others living in the countryside grew crops reared animals these farmers and herders supplied food to the craftspersons scribes and rulers in the cities so we see that the people living in the countryside that is the farmers and the herders they were the main suppliers of food and livestock to the people of the cities we know that the remains of plants that the harappans grew wheat barley pulses peas rice sesame linseed and mustard so we have found remains of these kind of plants uh, uh, from the harappan cities and these were probably grown and uh, consumed by the people of the harappan cities a new tool the plow was used to dig the earth for turning the soil and planting seeds so we see uh, there are also evidence of a new tool called the plow which was uh, in use in that time it was used to dig the earth for turning the soil and to plant seeds while real plow which was which were probably made of uh, wood have not survived toy models have been found as this region does not receive heavy rainfall some form of irrigation may have been used this means that water was stored and supplied to the fields when the plants were growing so we see that uh, unfortunately uh, no actual model of a wooden plow has survived due to uh, decomposition and uh, it, uh, it being a perishable material but uh, toy models of such plow that were used in that times here you can see the picture is also given uh, have survived Uh, so uh, these models also suggest that uh, there was a system of irrigation that was used in this agriculture that is uh, this re region did not receive a heavy rainfall and so we see that water was stored in tanks or through canals it was brought from other water bodies and uh, it was supplied to the agricultural fields the harappans they reared cattle sheep and uh, goat and buffalo water and pastures were available around the settlements however in the dry summers months large herds of animals were probably take, taken to greater distances in search of grass and water they also collected fruits like bur and uh, caught fish and hunted wild animals like the antelope so we see Uh, the people of the harappan civilization they also reared uh, cattle uh, sheep goat buffalo uh, the pasture and food for these uh, animals were usually available around the harappan settlements but during the drier seasons these animals needed to be taken to uh, areas that were further away from the settlements where primarily they were to the area where there was enough sufficient food and uh, pasture available for these herds uh, the people of harappan civilization they also hunted uh, wild animals like the antelope and they also uh, collected fruits like bur so a closer look the harappan town in gujarat the city of dholavira was located on the khadir bet also known as bet in the run of kutch where there was fresh water and fertile soil so we see that uh, one of the major conditions for founding a city or a settlement is the presence of uh, fresh water and fertile soil 
as these people were uh, you know engaged in agriculture so they needed a land with a uh, with a soil was very fertile so they could grow their crops unlike some of the other harappan cities which were divided into two parts dholavida was divided into three parts and each part was surrounded with massive stone walls with entrances through gateways so we see that uh, the city of dholavida differed from the other harappan cities in a way that it was divided into three uh, initially the harappan cities were divided into two parts but but dholavida was divided into three parts and each of the part was surrounded by a massive wall there were also gateways that were there in between the walls which were used to enter the city there was also large open area in the settlement where public ceremonies could be held so we see that there is a sort of a central uh, plaza in the uh, city of dholavida where public ceremonies were held other finds include large uh, letters of harappan script that were carved out on white stone and uh, perhaps inlaid in wood this is a unique find as generally harappan writings have been found on small objects such as seals so we see that um, in the city of dholavida one also finds that there are remains of large uh, letters used in the harappan script that have been found these were probably inlaid in a wood and uh, this is quite different from the other seals as most of the seals that have been found uh, using the harappan uh, script are usually very small in size so this one makes it st stand out from the others uh, the city of lothal stood beside the tributary of the sabarmati in gujarat close to the gulf of khambat so we see the another city in gujarat uh, it was located beside it the name of the city is lothal and it was located beside the river sabarmati near close to the mouth of gulf of khambat it was situated near areas where raw materials such as uh, semi precious stones were easily available so we see that uh, they situated uh, the city in a place there where their raw materials in this case a semi precious stones were easily available this was an important center for making objects out of stone shell and metal there were also stored house in the city many seals and uh, ceilings the impression of a seal on a clay were found in this stored house so we see that in uh, lothal there is also the evidence of a stored house that has been found now in this stored house uh, many seals and uh, ceilings ceilings are uh, the impression of an actual seal that is in you know, made on a clay so these have been found in large quantities in this stored house uh, here is, is the picture below we can see the dockyard at lothal this huge tank may have been a dockyard where boat ships came through the sea and uh, through the river channel goods were probably loaded and unloaded here so we can see that uh, although during so it was so many years ago the architecture of this city was so developed that they actually had a working dockyard as this was near the coast so they traded mostly through uh, the sea routes and in this dockyard we can see the ships came and brought their uh, brought and sold their uh, material in the city of lothal next part we see a building that was found here was probably a workshop for making beads pieces of stone half made beads tools for making uh, bead making and finished beads have all been found here so also a, a, a workshop for bead making ha has been found in the city of lothal uh, there are evidence of uh, remains of uh, these uh, small pieces of stones half made beads the tools used in bead making have been found you know and fully made beads have also been found so next we have a, a description box about seals and seals so let us see 
wheels may have been used to stamp bags or packages containing goods that were sent from one place to another so here we see that the actual purpose of the seals so it is suggested that they could have been used as a sort of a marker on bags of uh, different items when they were transported from one place to another after a bag was closed and tied a layer of wet clay was uh, applied on the knot and the seal was pressed on it the impression of the seal uh, the impression of as a sealing so we uh, see that uh, after when the bag that contains the material has been closed and a seal has been applied on top of it the impression that the seal may made is known as a sealing so here is it the impression of a seal is known as a sealing if the sealing is intact one could be sure that the goods are arrived goods have arrived safely so we see that this was an important feature in the transport of different goods from one place to another and uh, to ensure a quality of the goods that if the seal was okay so one could figure out that the goods have been delivered correctly so let us see the next part the mystery of the end around 3900 years ago we find that the beginning of a major change people stopped living in many uh, of the cities writing seals weights were no longer used raw materials brought from long distances became rare in mohenjo daro we find the garbage piled up on the streets and the drainage system broke down and uh, new less impressive houses houses were built even over the streets so we see that around 3900 years ago there was a general decline was this area we see that people stop living in these major the lighting system the seals the weights these all these were no longer used in the particular case of mohenjo daro we see that uh, there is garbage piled up on the streets the drainage system has stopped working and also the newer buildings were very less impressive compared to the older ones and some were even built on the existing streets so we see that there is a big breakdown in the town planning of the cities why did all this happen sure some scholars suggest that the rivers dried up others suggest that there was a deforestation this could have happened because fuel was required for baking bricks and for smelting copper ores beside grazing by large herds of cattle sheep and goat may have destroyed the green cover in some areas there were floods but none of the reasons could explain the end of all the cities flooding or drying up a river would have an effect only in some areas so we see that when we uh, talk about the causes of this decline there uh, is a lot of confusion uh, among the historians and scholars some scholars suggest that uh, this uh, in the civilization it declined due to the drying up of the river uh, many rivers had dried up due to uh, adverse climate and others suggest that it was due to deforestation as large quantities of trees were cut down and the fuel near the cities were exhausted as you know that these uh, uh, wood was used in the making of burnt bricks and also in the smelting of uh, bronze so a large quantity of wood was regularly used so this led could have led to uh, deforestation on a large scale at the same time some other scholars they also suggest that uh, the grazing by large herds of cattle could have destroyed the green cover in the surrounding areas of the city and this could have affected the overall climate and the vegetation of this area and thus leading to its downfall but all these explanations are uh, not uh you know final explanations as these do not uh, give reason for the end of all the cities of the indus valley civilization uh the instance of flooding or uh, drying up of a river 
all these could affect you know uh, only in a particular area but what happened to the whole of the civilization why did it die out it still remains a mystery now in the next part we see it appears as if the rulers lost control in any case the effects of the changes are quite clear sites in sindh west and west punjab present day pakistan were abandoned while many people moved into the uh, newer and smaller settlements to the east and to the south so we see here that um, perhaps the rulers of these cities they lost control as the all the systems of social order it broke down and we see that many cities uh, in the sindh region and in the punjab abandoned and the people they migrated to the east and started living in smaller uh, newer smaller settlements they also moved to the south of the new cities emerged uh, from about 1400 uh, years later now we will read about them in chapter 5 and 8 so uh, this brings this chapter to an end uh, later we see that over here there are some exercises given you can practice all these exercises on your own and if you have any doubts you can uh, write it in the comments uh, we will just uh, go through the keywords and the important dates so we see that uh, the first keyword is city we see that the, the large areas of habitation settled habitation were are known as the cities the citadel uh, citadel we saw is the raised area to the west of the city is known as the citadel the scribe is the person who knows how to read and write the crafts person we see is a person who specializes in you know making different kinds of items then metal you know is a metal is a natural raw material that is used to make different tools now seal that we see is the harappan seal is a form of uh, writing and uh, communication specialist is a type of crafts person who specializes in making only one type of thing now raw materials are these are the basic materials that we need to survive or to build any item uh, plow it was it is a new instrument that was used for agriculture it was used during the indus valley civilization now irrigation it, uh, is the practice of providing water to the agricultural fields uh, you know through uh, canals or uh, storage tanks and so on the important dates are the cotton cultivation at mehergar that is about 7000 years ago beginning of cities about 4700 years ago beginning of the end of the cities that is 3900 years ago and the emergence of other cities that is 2500 years ago so these were the keywords and the important dates now you go through uh, all these exercises and uh, if you have any doubts share them in the comment section and uh, give me your suggestion and if this uh, explanation was helpful to you please like share and subscribe to this channel uh, i will meet you in the next chapter thank you